it happens all too often as you're meditating. You sit down. The breath is not comfortable. The body's not comfortable. And you get upset. That, of course, aggravates things. You have to remember the Buddha's statement at the beginning of the Dhammapada. The mind or the heart is the forerunner of all things. When you look at the body, you're looking at past karma. In other words, your old actions are being reflected back at you. And if you don't like those reflections, you've got to make new reflections. Skillful reflections out of skillful mind states. So put the mind first. And then from there, think of the breath being first in terms of the body. Because here again, there's a problem. We tend to breathe around our pains, or up to our pains, and that the pains act as a wall or an obstacle course. But actually, the breath should be primary. There's nothing about pain that can block breath. It's just a perception. So you've got to change your perceptions. The mind comes before the breath. The breath comes before all the other elements in the body. Think in those terms. So as a John Sawat, every time we would begin meditating, would say, okay, dress your mind. Or fix your mind. The word in Thai is dang which is the word they use for dressing the body or for fixing food. In other words, get it in the right shape. Happy to be here. Confident that you can make it go well. And so you're not reacting to what's happening in the body. You're not reacting to things that have happened during the day. You're going to take advantage of the fact that you do have freedom of choice right now. You can do something new, something skillful. And it starts by having that confident sense that things do start with the mind. And regardless of what mood the mind has been in in the course of the day, you can change it. After all, the Buddha said nothing can change as quickly as the mind. So feel free to put it in a good mood. Remember that the Buddha never defines mind. It's one of those terms that never gets defined. It doesn't say anything about the three characteristics, but the opposite of the three characteristics with regard to the mind. He said if you define yourself, you limit yourself. So there's a very good reason why he doesn't define mind. The word citta, mind or heart, is closely related to a verb which means to will. So that's one of his functions. But there's also a knowing quality to it, a brightness to it that allows you to observe yourself. So instead of trying to define the mind, try to notice what can you do with the mind? The less you define it, the more opportunities you leave open. So what function should the mind have now? It should be determined to stay here, to get to know itself, and to do that by looking into the mirror of the breath. Here we can think of a John Lee's image of the breath as a mirror for the mind. And you make sure the mirror is polished and it's smooth so you can see things clearly. And how do you smooth the mirror? Well, you smooth the mind. This is what the analogy breaks down. But everything starts with the mind. So when the breath is not going well, don't tell yourself that you're trapped by a bad breath. Just say, well, that's what 
it's being reflected back to me now, but I can change the mind and get something new reflected. It may take some time. Karma doesn't always act as quickly as you would like, but the breath is one of the first things to respond to the mind, and it responds quickly. It's simply a matter of having the confidence that you've got the mind and you've got the breath here. And if there are any sensations in the body that you label as obstacles, remind yourself that the labels are optional. Because what in the body is solid. There is solidity, but even in the solidity there's a porous quality. The atoms of your bones are mostly space. We received a book a while back which tries to take you through the universe from the largest frame of reference down to the smallest. And we divide things by, I forgot what the number was, but 10,000, say. You get to the atom, you see the atom, and then you go to the space between the outside of the nucleus and the electron. And you go through page after page after page of nothing. The atom is mainly space. So what in there is, can act as an obstacle to the breath? Hold that perception in mind, and it gives you some freedom. This is a good principle to keep in mind. Here we are at the beginning of the Rains Retreat, and it's the time for us to think about how we're going to use the retreat to get something special. Of course, with COVID, we've been living as if it's been a rains retreat for a couple of years now. But now it's the time to settle down and think about it. Here's nine months we've been through since the last retreat. Now we have three months ahead of us. What do you want to make special out of that? And remember, it's going to be the power of your mind that's going to make it special. The determination you have. Remember the insight the Buddha had the night of his awakening, that the power of intention. Intention is what drives the universe. That's getting your intention right, that you can go to good states, or even better than that, you can get out of this whole cycle entirely. The mind has that potential. But we tend to strap it down. Focus it on little things. They're not all that important. They don't lead to, to anything worthwhile. So let's focus in on something that really is worthwhile. We live in this universe that is basically meaningless, pointless. And instead of seeing that as alienating, we see that as an opportunity. We can give our lives meaning. We can give a point to our lives by what we focus on. The Buddha suggests that the best thing is to focus on this question of why we create suffering for ourselves. Even though we don't want the suffering. And as he says, we try to develop the path. And that'll take us through our intentions to something beyond. To which aspects of the path need work? This is something where each of us has to look into our own hearts and minds. It breaks down into the triple training of virtue, or heightened virtue, heightened mind, heightened discernment. Okay, which part of those is not heightened? Does your virtue need to be heightened? Does your concentration? Does your discernment? What's lacking? got three months to settle down, living in a community of other people who are practicing. What do you want to make of this time? Choose wisely, and then try to stick with it. Those are the first two elements of a good determination, discernment and truth. Then you add the other two. 
One is generosity, the ability to relinquish things that get in the way. And the other is calm. The mind tends to get worked up when it has to stick with something that challenges it, that forces it to give things up that it likes. And if you allow yourself to stay worked up, then you're not going to last for very long. The key to any determination is to be calm. That doesn't mean you're sluggish, but it means that whatever comes up, you don't let yourself get knocked around. When you think about the things you have to give up, you immediately learn how to, how to solve the problem. When you think about the things you have to do that are going to stretch you, you think of ways to give yourself pep talks, encouragement. In other words, you have to learn how to correct your own mind. Another good reason why the mind is not clearly defined. Here's where we take advantage of the fact that there are lots of minds in there, lots of different voices. And you want to learn how to side with the ones that are, that are skillful, that will see that determination through. So as the Johns keep saying, the mind can be amazing. And the reason we don't see it as amazing is because, because we keep it strapped down. We focus it on things that don't require all that much effort, don't require all that much discernment. Otherwise, don't require the, the qualities of a good determination. And because we focus it on ordinary things, the mind seems very ordinary. But it is possible to find something that's extraordinary. So look inside to see what resources you have to, to draw on. Develop the good ones. And they're ready to be developed. Just make sure that you don't underestimate the potentials you have within you. Remember that the mind comes first. And even though it may take time to put the energy out into the world so that a good energy is reflected back, accept that fact with good, as a good sport. What you're seeing reflected back is old karma. Sometimes it's very old karma. But have some trust that the big issue is not the old karma, it's the new karma you're creating now. As the Buddha said, this is what makes the difference between whether you're going to suffer right now or not. You don't have to go back and wait for all your old karma to be straightened out, and you don't have to be tied down by your old karma. Remember the image of the, the salt crystal. Whatever your karma is in the past, it's that crystal of salt. What really makes a difference is the quality of your mind right now. Is it the little tiny cup of water, or is it the large river? And that's something you can choose. So when you have that choice available, why not make the most of it?